MMA Fight Corner. We've got on with us right now, guys, a gal that we were lucky enough to sit down and talk to at UFC 162 when it was out here in Las Vegas. This is the Tough 18 season coach and the co-main event headliner for UFC 168, Misha Tate. Misha, thanks so much for coming on to the MMA Fight Corner. How are you today? I'm doing just great. How are you? Hey, we're we're fantastic. We're we're fighting the good fight out here in Las Vegas. You know, all you UFC folks, you seem to live just a life of absolute privilege, of the fame, the fortune, everything that comes with it. But you know what? You give back a little bit to the community. And I just I have to start off by saying happy Muffvember to you. I I am celebrating Movember, but happy Muffvember. I thought that was a very bold thing for you to come out and do, and it's something that it should be recognized for what it is. Well, I thank you. I'm all about the uh, cancer awareness, so i got to support it as, as best I can. Me too. Joey is actually giving free Muffvember haircuts here to anybody that <laughs> comes down and visits him. So well, that was that was his offer. Well, you know what, though, is that, like, uh, you know, I got I, I can't grow a, a goatee or a mustache. You know, my, my facial hair grows in all naturally white, trashy, you know, patchy. So I like to stay clean cut and shaven. So I figured I'd take a page out of Misha's book and do the, the, the Muff member thing myself. <laughs> Well, there you go. We're going we're gonna to have lots of time left to talk about that. It is Thanksgiving month, so we've got all month to be thankful for that image right there, Joey. Uh, Misha, without further ado, uh, great talking to you here on the show. Let, let's start right off here. Tough 18. This has been probably the most hyped, the most ballyhooed, the most talked about season of tough that there has ever been. How am I guess, how impressed are you with the new Fox Sports 1 channel, how that's worked out for you guys, and how much attention this has gotten? Uh, you know, it's gotten a lot of attention, um, and, and it's, been, it's been an interesting um, an it's, it's interesting time period, I suppose you could say, for me, you know, being there live and then seeing how, you know, how everything's actually put together, and, um, you know, quite a learning experience, you know, I, I'm really, honestly, I'm a, I'm a fighter, first and foremost, so I don't get a lot of practice coaching or, you know what I mean, being like the the head person that's got to make all the decisions, you know, I'm kind of usually the person that's like just along for the ride and kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm kind of just free-spirited and I just do what I like to do, but this really made me crack down and have like a lot of responsibility and um, it was kind of stressful at times, but um, I'm looking forward to this week's episode, um, you know, it, it's Team Tate versus Team Tate because our girls did so well, um, you know, all of them but one uh, made it into the semifinals. So at that point, there's not there's only one of girls one one girl on Rousey's team to fight. So that means that two of ours have to fight, and it brings a really awkward dynamic to the the whole coaching thing because you have two people that are practicing at the same time that are fighting each other, and it's like this is really weird. Like this doesn't happen in the real world. You know, when in the real world would you ever? you know, train in the same room as the person you're fighting, you know, it's just crazy. So it's, it's a pretty intense, you know, um, but it's, it was a great episode. I actually got to see it um, yesterday, so I won't let out any secrets, but I will say that it is a phenomenal episode and you guys really definitely will want to watch this one. Well, before the before the season even started, you know, you had trained with Julian in the past, and now moving forward, it seems like the show's kind of hinting at the fact that there's a, a feeling of resentment from her teammates that she's getting special attention. Did you feel like you were giving her special attention? And coming into this, is it kind of hard not to because even subconsciously or unconsciously because she's your friend, she's your training partner before she came on the show? Well, um... I really didn't feel like there was any preferential treatment on my side. I didn't feel that way. Um, you know, I didn't go in there with the intention of, you know, giving Juliana an advantage over the other girls. You know, I I honestly want the girl who wants it the most, who's going to represent women's MMA the best and who works the hardest to win. So, I mean, that's really up to them, you know, who who's going to win these fights, you know, who's going to work harder. And I will say, though, that Juliana was definitely – one of, if not the hardest working girl in the room. Um, and she she just came in every single day on a mission, and uh, she came, she would go straight to me and be like, Misha, I want to work this, because yesterday in practice, I didn't get this defense done. I need to drill it a hundred times if you'll let me, a thousand times if you'll let me. And I need to drill it, I need to work it, boom, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. Like, or show me something, give me something, teach me something, do something. Like, she was on the coaching staff the entire time. Like, she was hungry and she wanted to know and um you know the other girls they worked hard in practice when they were sparring you know all of them were great and tough and good partners but 
they didn't do that. You know, there was a lot of times where it was like, hey, you know, uh, do you guys want to? Do you guys want to work on something? They're like, no, I'm just gonna sit in the sauna. I need to lose weight. You know, no, I need. I'm just gonna run on the treadmill. I need to get my weight down. And Juliana is a small 135er, so she didn't have to focus on getting her weight down. The other two girls. Um, Raquel and Sarah. Sarah particularly really had to work hard dieting the whole time and running on and doing all those things. So, you know, it wasn't that I didn't want to give them that attention. It was just the way that it kind of worked out originally. But once there was, I realized that there was a problem, you know, and that was the other thing too is I tried to establish, uh, I'm going to try to make this short for you guys, try to establish <laughs> an open relationship with my team right away and say, hey, if there's ever any problems, please come talk to me. I'll fix it. I'll make it better. And, you know, they didn't do that at first. They kind of just were gossiping behind my back and were like, oh, well, we think she has favorites. Like, if they would have came and said something to me, I would have fixed it right away and been like, no, it's not the case. What do you guys need from me? We'll change it, you know. And um, we did end up devising a plan to fix the problem once I became aware of it. But, you know, for a little while I didn't realize that there was any kind of, you know, an issue or that they were feeling that way. I would just ask them, you guys want to do something? No, I just want to run on the treadmill. Okay, you know, what am I going to do? I'm not going to twist your arm and make you learn something, you know. Well, speaking of twisting fighters' arms and, and fighter coachability, what fighter this season, from your team at least, do you feel like was, was the most coachable and had the most improvement? Where just like they came on and from the day they got there to the day they left, there was just such an amazing improvement where you're kind of stepping back like, wow, this person, you know, they've really absorbed everything we've given them and they, they have a promising future. Um, Put you it on the spot. Been Juliana. <laughs> Juliana, huh? Okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. Honestly, um, just a- she's like a sponge. I mean, I'm not just saying that because, you know, she's my friend. I mean, she's she's a little crazy, you know. I love her to death, but <laughs> she can drive me just as crazy as you've seen everybody else on the house, you know. She's a wonderful person, really she is. She has a great heart, a heart of gold. She'd give you the shirt off her back, but sometimes her tendencies will drive you crazy. She's one of those, she's like a kid that won't stop asking questions. She's a terrible habit of that. It drives me crazy sometimes, but I love the girl. And, you know, as far as, as her her willingness to learn, you know, she's full of questions, and she, she just absorbs it like a sponge. She comes in every day with a mission and a plan that she has to get something out of practice, you know, whatever that may be for the day. And um, she made remarkable growth and improvement throughout the whole season. So, I mean, Chris Holdsworth is a great hard worker, very focused individual, but he already had, like, a very strong skill set coming into the – the show and there wasn't a whole lot that we really taught him like whereas Juliana was a little more like raw and had had a little bit more for us to like work with and like give her things for her game to help improve her all right speaking of raw here Misha I've got to ask you the question I I think that's probably going to be on everybody's mind we might each have one about this but talk briefly about your relationship with Ronda Rousey oh Joey I know I said you're all going to have one talk about that what has this been like um it was it was all right. I don't know. It was just kind of crazy. Like I, I um, I'm glad that I did it, even though it was trying at times because it helped me implement my you know kind of my <clears throat> change of heart and my my game plan. I guess you would speak as far as um, not breaking my character. You know, my whole goal in this whole show was to not allow Rhonda to manipulate me in any way, shape, or form. I'm not perfect i didn't do it like you know a hundred percent but i that was my goal because i was so emotionally manipulated the first time that we fought that i just saw red i don't even remember really the fight you know i just wanted to hurt her i didn't even i wasn't even like going in there as like a mixed martial artist i was like going in there like i'm gonna beat this bitch's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, hated I hated her and i was like you know what i'm letting go of that like resentment i'm letting go of all of it i'm getting over the bitterness i'm gonna be better not bitter and I'm going to be the same Misha Tate that I am at home, that I am in the normal training room, as I am when Rhonda's in the room because she doesn't dictate me. And so, I mean, I think that gave the impression to some people that I'm fake. You know, that's what I've been hearing from all the people that are very hardcore Rhonda supporters. But All five of them? And by the way, I don't know if I'm allowed to, to cuss on this show or not. That's, you know what? That's okay. We're going we're gonna to do you a little favor and drop it out like it never even happened. <laughs> well, okay. So... Yeah, your Rhonda is real. She's definitely real, but she's just a real bitch. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> she's all right, but uh, <laughs> in normal functioning society, you can't act like that. You know, she acts like, you know, she's above everybody. And uh, it wouldn't go over well if, you know, if she wasn't who she was, which in my mind is not an acceptable, an acceptable, 
excuse to act like that. You know, I think that that's a poor role model, and, you know, that's just my opinion. So I, I just decided to handle myself the way that I would and not allow the emotional aspect to even have an effect on me. You know, I was going to shake around his hand every time after the fights because that's what I was taught in wrestling, that after I got done wrestling, win, lose, you know, it didn't matter how embarrassing the loss was or how much, you know, the guy was a jerk that you were wrestling. You shook his hand and you shook the coach's hand, and that's just the way it was. Sportsmanship was a must, and it was always enforced. And so for me, I was like, you know what? I don't care that it's Rhonda. She doesn't dictate me. I'm going to go over there and shake their hands, and they can take it. You know, they can take the sportsmanship shake if they want to, or they can flip me off. You know, they chose to flip me off. That's fine. You know, that's how they do things. You know, but I have my way that I do things, and I'm not going to change it because of Rhonda Rousey. I'm not going to change being a happy person because Rhonda walked into the room and all of a sudden there's like a, a cloud over my head. Like, no, I'm not going to allow that. Happiness is a choice, and I made that my choice on the season of The Ultimate Fighter that I wasn't going to be dictated. I love it, and I'll tell you what, it, my definition of real is definitely more taking that sportsmanship route. You know, I'm with you where you shake your opponent's hand, win, lose, or draw, you know. I, I think that's keeping it real. That's just being a professional. But I, I love the mantra, better, not bitter. That seems like something you'd have to chant over and over in your head all day long in dealing yeah. with these circumstances. But um, exactly. you're, uh, So you're sitting at home. It, say, say that again. No, that's oh, just phone just interference, say, Joey. Oh, okay. I thought she was. Mum- oh, okay. I thought she was mumbling. No, but but okay. So I want to add one one quick thing. I just to say one quick thing. Just think about it for one second. What is more difficult and more challenging to do? To be Rhonda in that situation and just say whatever the hell you want and be you know as rude and ruthless as you want, or really focus and bite your tongue and be the bigger person and you know what I mean. Try to like. See, like sportsmanship and, and all that stuff. You know, it's not that I, you know, that I'm being fake. It's just a choice that I'm making to, to be the bigger person and to be better, not to play into that kind of garbage. You know, you know. Plus, it seems to piss her off. So for me, that's a bonus. <laughs> well, no, it's like when you're a kid. You know, they always told you that the, the when you, and getting into a fight, the bigger man walks away. The harder thing to do is walk away, and it's true. You know, the harder thing is is always to walk away. It's like you know, you you face people criticizing you, ridiculing you. You don't feel good because you wanted that that feeling of retaliation. That yeah, I got you back. So yeah. it's definitely the harder thing to exactly. do. But uh, you know, this season when they market this on, on Fox Sports One, you know, they they tagline this the the new biggest rivalry in sports, and you got to say it is definitely the biggest rivalry in women's mixed martial arts. I mean, you know, you guys are two names that are definitely synonymous. With the, with each other, and I think you guys are going to compete against each other more than more than just this next time as well in your future. But so you're sitting at home and you get the text, you read the article, whatever it is that you beat Rhonda in the the voting to be on the cover of the video game, the new video game coming out. How sweet is that moment? What's going on through your head when that happens? Well, I was a little in disbelief at first because the first thing I did is I woke up and got breakfast and I hopped on my Twitter. And, um, you know, I was, I was nervous, but I was excited to see, like, you know, what if, if anything was going on, you know. And, and I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to jump straight on the website and see because it's going to be, like, too much for me. So I'm just going to hop on Twitter and see what, you know, what if any, like, feedback. That's where the back. new news, everyone gets their everything. news from Twitter. It's the most trusted news source in the world. <laughs> I certainly do. I don't even watch the news anymore. My Twitter feed's plenty, plenty knowledgeable. So, um, no, but I... Um, I hopped on there, and someone goes, oh, you, you beat Ronda Rousey, huh? Like, And I was like, I did? You know, and then I read another tweet, like, congratulations, making it past the first round and beating Ronda. And I was like, what? And I read a couple more, and I finally went on the website, and I saw that, you know, I had won, and I, I about flew out of bed. I was so excited. I couldn't go back to sleep, and I was just, like, I couldn't believe it, you know? I mean, I, I was hopeful the entire time that I would beat her. You know, I, I never gave up hope, and I was like, you know, I can, I think I can do this. I have some of the best fans that anybody could ask for. Really, I do. My fans are just spectacular, and I owe the thank you 100% to my friends and fans who went on there and voted last minute. They really gave me that, that full, like, 110% support that last hour or two. And, um, you know, at one point, Rhonda and I were tied, and then she pulled ahead for, like, a couple days. I don't know by how much. But she was still in the lead, and I don't know if they updated the system or anything like that, but according to the system, you know, she was still the leader, you know, a couple hours out, and I really just reached out to everybody and said, please, I need your guys' help, if you would. Like I said, I was hopeful, but honestly, you know, I'm used to Rhonda getting all the attention, Rhonda getting all of the fan favoritism. I'm used to her. You know, it's just a way that it's been for a long time. You know, she's gotten the UFC 
you know, support. We all have, but it's been the Rhonda. Sh- it's been the Rhonda show. Honestly, it really has. She's the one on all the magazine covers. She's the one on getting all the interviews. She's the one on all the TV shows. She's the one making movies. Like, and that's fine. And that's great. It still benefits all of women's MMA, and and that's okay. But I just didn't expect to like beat her in that. You know, I figured she has over double the fans that I do on Twitter. I'm like, she's probably gonna win. But you know, I never give up hope. I never give up. You know, I mean, never say never. So I just gave it my all, and um, I was rewarded for that and it it was a really 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 good feeling uh misha when you have to go on like the ufc world tour and do all these press engagements with ronda what's that been like because it seems like she like you said wastes no time getting right up in your face uh has that at all been like difficult for you to really handle doing all this kind of stuff since tough and the filming and everything no, because I, I got used to it, like I said. So that's what's really nice. It used to be difficult for me because it would be like every great once in a while I'd see her. And what is hilarious is like she used to be, you know, she says, oh, I'm fake, I'm fake. Well, she, I freaking learned it from the best if that's fake because she used to be like coming up to me and being like, oh, hey, buddy, how are you? With like the belt over her shoulder. I'm like, oh, my God, like, I'm going to punch this girl right now. Like, I hated her, you know, but she knew it. and She'd rub it in my face, like, hey, buddy, how are you? And I'd just, like, walk away, like, God, I can't stand this girl. She's such a brat. And, um, you know, and then it used to bother me. But then as I got, I had to be around her every day, multiple times a day, I started to learn that it was like an act, that it was like this tough girl act that, you know, and whether she was angry or whether she was trying to be, you know, manipulative or whatever, it just, I started to see through it. And I was like, this is, you know, this is a joke. Like, what am I even upset about? Like, this girl, she has her fair share of own insecurity issues, and that's why she asked that. Like, you know, she's so, she's, you know, the Diaz, part of the Diaz brothers group the whole time so that she can believe her own, like, her own whatever, you know what I mean? And and I'm not saying she's not a badass. Like, don't twist it. Like, she's an incredible fighter, very, very talented young lady. But I think that she um, tries to add to her own hype in her mind by acting the way that she does, you know, so that she she really, like, believes that she's the biggest and baddest, you know, because she puts on this persona the whole time, where I think deep down inside she's a little bit insecure. And that that's why when she comes out in her fight that, I think that's why she's so desperate to get the takedown. Like, you know, it, she's just very desperate for it. Like, she won't even, like, try the stand-up game at all. She doesn't venture out. She does the same thing every time. And, you know, hat, hats off to her. She's able to do it every time. But, you know, I plan on changing that in December, and I think that she's going to have a whole new new thing to, to deal with, and she's never ventured out of her comfort zone. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep continue pushing her out of that. I did that through the Ultimate Fighter. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to do it in the fight. And, and I, I fully intend on entering this next year as a champion. Well, Misha, let me just ask you real quick, because Joey was talking about the development of you and Ronda as one of these great sports rivalries. Do you think that perhaps Ronda's got an interest in a T-shirt consortium of some sort? Because the Team Rousey, Team Tate shirts have now taken over the place of Team Aniston and Team uh, Joe Lee. So is this really a secret ploy for her just to own a T-shirt company and sell Team Rousey, Team Tate shirts? Because that could be an awesome idea as well. Hey, you might be on to something there. <laughs> hey, 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 Misha, you know, in the first fight, uh, you said that Ronda got in your head and, you know, you just wanted to come out there and get her because she was in your head. Do you feel like this whole experience, you know, developing your mantra of, of better, not bitter and dealing with her and understanding how to deal with her, do you feel like that coming into the rematch, that's going to give you a mental advantage over her? I think so, you know, because I've been there, done that. I understand what happened the first time that I fought Ronda, and that was a new experience for me at the time. So it was a learning experience, and I did learn from it, and I think I became better and stronger for it. So I'm thankful in a way that she's part of my career, and I'm thankful that I have a rival like her because, you know, it's it's made me a stronger person inside and outside of the cage. It's made me a better fighter, and, you know, it's gotten a lot of not a lot of notoriety so you know it is good that I have her in my in my life and I wouldn't want it any other way I wouldn't change it but you know at the same time um you know yeah it was a learning experience and the first time around she she made me so emotional that I didn't fight the way that I normally fight I wasn't functioning off of positive energy I was functioning off of negative energy and it's not really my style so I think that now that I have it figured out a little bit you know I don't know you know because again this is you know 
it's it's a trial. I'm trying something new, but it, you know that's the way that you grow and that's the way that you learn things about yourself. If you're staying in one spot, that's really the only way that you're failing. As long as you're moving forward or you're trying new things and you're you're you know having different outlooks in life and whatever your whatever your 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 challenges are in life, as long as you're moving forward or you're moving. Um, you know, then that is success. So for me, I'm trying something a little bit different, and I feel way better. I feel so much happier, you know, that I'm not bogged down with all this resentment and anger all the time, and the fact that I'm able to implement every day being better and not bitter. Misha, when you look at the fight ahead, I mean, I remember you spoke back with us at the uh, UFC Fan Expo in July, and you'd said that Ronda has this modified arm bar, and this time you're ready for it. I'm just curious, um, what makes her arm bar different than any other that you've seen or faced in the past? Well, I mean, it's traditional arm bar. You pinch your heels through your butt, and you pinch your knees together, and, you know, you keep everything close together. And and with her, she crosses her feet and she pulls her knees apart, like very wide apart. Mm-hmm. So they're like, I mean, it's just very different. You're, traditionally, you're taught not to cross your feet. That that's a bad thing because you can't get as much pressure with the arm bar. Well, she crosses her feet and she also spreads her knees very far apart. So, you know, it makes, uh, it, it's, it's just different. It's like a hybrid form of an arm bar and, um, you know, it's, it's uh, not exactly the same as a traditional arm bar. So, it's, I mean, really, it's almost like a different move. Well, I tell you what, Misha, you know, this has been one of the most interesting conversations. You could be surprised that sometimes it's hard to find great conversalists in the mixed martial arts world. But you sound like you've got all your faculties together here. The show has been just super fun. Uh, we can't wait to see you again. I guess you're going to be out here this weekend as well for UFC uh, 167. So maybe we'll get to see you when we're out there doing Radio Row. Great talking to you today. So for Joey and for Heidi, uh, we'll see you soon, okay? All right. Thanks, guys.